Hey there everyone and welcome to GTech. Today I'm going to be showing you the app for the iPad called Air Display. This app is available on the App Store for 10 bucks. If you want to get it, just go on the App Store, search Air Display, download it. It is a universal app, so it also works with iPhone and iPod Touch. However, I would not recommend buying it if you only have one of those two devices because those screens are small and they aren't really that handy for this. Anyway, so let's just get straight into it. What do you do with Air Display? Air Display is a secondary screen for your Mac or your PC. I'm only going to be showing you the Mac today because that would take way too long to do both. But anyway, it works as a second display and you can touch it, you can use multi-touch features, it's awesome. So enough explaining, let's do a demonstration. So after you have the app open, it will tell you how to set up your computer to work with it and you just tap if you have an Apple or a Microsoft computer and once you're done setting up with your computer it will ask you to restart and then once you restart you can actually start using it now I don't know if you can see this but there's this little icon up in the menu bar that looks like a screen with an iPad and little Wi-Fi buttons so once you restart this button will show up and then what you do is you select the iPad from the list let me just zoom in here you select the iPad or the iPhone or iPod touch and then you can see your iPad turn blue and then your screen or screen will turn blue and then they'll both come up with your background that happens on the Mac on the PC I don't even remember what happens but anyway so once it's done you can go to your settings and you can go to your display settings and on the display button you can go to arrangement and you can choose how you want your screen to be set up so if your iPad is to the left of the screen you would put it on the left side if it's to the right on the right if it's above it put it on top if it's below it put it on bottom however I would not recommend putting it on bottom because when you do this it automatically moves the dock to your iPad or whatever device as you can see possibly no nope, you can't see it but anyway let me just pick this up it puts the dock on the bottom and that's okay I guess but then all of your icons are kind of tiny so I wouldn't recommend that as you can see there I kinda just tilted it it will automatically refresh with the new orientation um, but it takes a while as you can see Okay, so now it's done, and we're just going to go put the arrangement back where it should be, and awesome. So, that is how you set up the display. If you want the menu bar to be on the iPad, then you just click and drag the little white bar over to the iPad, maybe. There we go. And let go, and then you'll have the menu bar on the iPad just like it works with a normal second screen. So, what can you do with this screen? Well, you can open another web browser on it and just use it as a second screen, or you can put a finder window on it, or the Mac App Store, whatever you want to, and it will just show up there so that you can use this screen for whatever else you need to do. However, since it is a touch screen, um, it's kind of obvious that you're going to want to do some touch screen stuff with it. So for this example, I have the app called Scribbles, maybe, there we go. I have the application called Scribbles, let me just drag it to the iPad, there we go. And you can even put it in full screen. And so now we have, whoa, that was close. Now we have the Scribbles app on the iPad, and we can just draw on it like this. Whoops. Like this. Hi. You. Tube. And as you can see, it's not perfect and it's definitely not that fast, but it does work and it works okay. So you can do all of the normal point and click features that you do with other apps. Uh, we'll just change the brush and make it a large brush and we can draw a rainbow all over it. So that's pretty cool. So 
that was a little mini review of Scribbles. Um, I don't know how much it costs or where to get it, just Google, whatever. So, um, you might be wondering what can you do with scrolling, right clicking, etc. on the iPad. Well, if you didn't read the instructions, um, it tells you how to do all this. It even has an instruction video. So, what you do, let me just go to my applications. If you want to scroll, um, it's just like as if you had a trackpad. You use two fingers, scroll up to go up, scroll down to go down. Um, if you need to right click, put two fingers anywhere on the screen and then tap where you want it to right click. So, there we go. And I get my little options. And of course, clicking like that, dragging like that. Other than that, there's not really much to explain, so I hope you like this video. Um, I want to give out a special thank you to Vince Bognot, who actually bought this app for me. Um, so thank you, Vince Bognot. Just click right now on the video, and you'll be taken to his channel, where you can subscribe to him, watch his videos, comment, whatever. So, that is it. Um, not much else to say. Thanks for watching the video. You can check out my blog, blog.gavinoscamp.com. You can email me with comments, questions, video suggestions at gavin at gavinrosscamp.com. And that's about it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.